Welcome. In this video, I'll be showing you how we can use type classes to extend the functionality of the natural numbers we coded a couple videos back. For example, we'll be making these natural numbers an instance of the type class num. This means that we can use the usual arithmetic operations of plus and times and so on, so the usual operators, in order to compute with uh, the natural numbers. More importantly, if we implement instances of num for our natural numbers, then any Haskell function that works with uh, type class num will also work with our uh, new data type of the natural numbers. This means that writing only about 50 lines of code or so, uh, as we'll see in this video, allows us to gain access to hundreds of Haskell functions that have already been written and that will then also work for our new data type. Thus, overall, writing these type classes saves a ton of work because you don't have to re-implement um, existing functions for your new data type. You just have to make them an instance of the corresponding type class that is required for the, the function you're interested in to work. All right, so I've created a file here called nats.hs, and I've capitalized uh, the nats because we're going to make this uh, script here a module. So I'm going to start by writing uh, module uh, nats where, and here uh, nats is the name of the, the module, and as I said, the, the corresponding script has to also have this name uh, as its file name. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to import something. We're going to import uh, data.ratio. Uh, this is just uh, something that will become uh, important later on in our script. We're now basically going to re-implement the functions we saw in the video on the natural numbers, but in a much more succinct way and using type classes. So if you haven't watched that video, you should probably go back and watch that because I'm not going to go into detail into how the functions that I'm writing actually work because I already explained that in the video on the natural numbers. We're going to start out by defining a new data type for the natural numbers. So that's the same definition as in that uh, previous video. So a natural number is either going to be 0 or s of some pre-existing natural number. So s stands for successor here. And we're going to be deriving uh, equality and also uh, show. Recall that the intuition here is that any natural number is either 0 or the successor of some other natural number. And so this is just saying that natural numbers are basically obtained by counting. So we start with 0, and then we have the successor of 0, and then we have the successor of the successor of 0, and so on. So this stands for like counting 0, 1, 2, and so on. Next, in that video on natural numbers, we saw a pattern called folding which allowed us to implement uh, the arithmetic operations very succinctly. So it was called fold n, and it took an operation which took an object of type a and returned an a, along with a starting value of type a, and then it takes a natural number which we fold over, and then in the end it returns something of type a. The idea here is just that folding over a natural number is just performing an operation n times if n is the natural number we're folding over. Now in the base case, when we uh, are going to fold over 0, we'll have some operation h, we'll have a starting value c, and if we're folding over 0, that's like applying h 0 times to our starting value c. So we should return uh, just the starting value. And in the non-base case, we again have an operation h, we have a starting value c, and what uh, the natural number we're given is the successor of some natural number n. And this means that we want to apply h one more time to the result that we get when we uh, fold over n. So here I put fold um, n h c uh, n, like so. OK, so uh, let's uh, reload here. And I'll show you exactly how fold works in an example. So this uh, fold n, we could, for instance, be uh, folding the operation, let's say, plus 2 with starting value 10. And I'm going to fold over the natural number s of s of z, so that's 2. So this is like applying the operation plus 2 twice to 10. So the result uh, should be 14. All right. 
We're now going to move on to implement type classes for the natural numbers, as I promised. So the first one we're going to implement is ORD. So in order to write an instance of a type class, you need to use the instance keyword. So you write instance ORD nat where, and then you have to define the necessary functions for that type class. Now, in order to find out what functions you need to put here, you uh, need to go to the documentation for the, the type class in question. So one way to do this is you can hover over ORD, and you should have a link here to the documentation. Uh, you compress this, and it'll redirect you to a web page, which gives you that documentation. So here we see the documentation for the type class ORD. Now another way, if you can't find the, the link in VS Code, another way to find the type classes are to just um, search for them. So you can use this uh, Haskell search engine called Hoogle. So if you uh, search in another search engine for Hoogle, you should find this page here. And in this page, you can uh, search for any sort of um, Haskell function or class and so on. So for example, I can just type in ORD here. And then I'll get uh, the first result here it says class uh, ORD. So that's exactly uh, the, the, well, the type class that I'm interested in. So if I click on that, then it'll also take me to the documentation. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, documentation page for the type class ORD. So the class keyword defines a new type class. And as for uh, functions, you can put certain constraints on uh, the type class you're defining. Again, the constraints are captured by this uh, double uh, arrow here. And in this case, the constraint on uh, type class ORD is that your object should also be of type class ek. So any uh, instance of type class ORD also needs to implement equality uh, before you can implement the ordering. All right. And then next, we have this description here in the text. So it says, the ORD class is used for totally ordered data types. So this means that uh, we should be able to compare any two values. Uh, and the comparison should be transitive and reflexive and anti-symmetric. So these are the properties that uh, you are expected from the comparison operator that ORD implements. However, Haskell doesn't actually go and check these properties. So in principle, you could write a really bad comparison that doesn't satisfy them. But the problem with that will be that, well, certain functions later on might expect that these properties hold. And therefore, if your comparison doesn't satisfy them, um, there might be issues uh, later on. OK, if we now scroll further down uh, this page, we see that there's this section called minimal complete definition. And it tells you uh, exactly what functions you need to write in order to implement the type class. So in this case, it's a minimal complete definition says it's either you need to write this function called compare, or you need to write this operator less than or equals. And then it says using compare can be more efficient for complex types. All right, so here we have a choice. We can either write a function called compare. And the type signature of this compare function we can find in the methods section. So uh, this should take uh, an object of our data type A and another one of type A and return uh, an ordering. Now ordering is a special uh, type that has three constructors, uh, capital LT, capital EK, capital GT, like this. And it represents whether something is less than, equal, or greater than another thing. On the other hand, we could have also chosen to implement uh, the type class using this less than or equals to operator. And uh, this operator here is like the usual uh, less than or equals operator in Haskell. So it takes uh, two objects of your type and it should return a Boolean. OK, so now that we know what we need to uh, implement for type class ORD, let's go back to VS Code. And in our case, we're going to uh, implement the compare function. So I need to write this function compare which takes two natural numbers and outputs an ordering element. So that's either ek, lt, or gt. And well, I can just write usual uh, Haskell functions in this where clause. So uh, I'm first saying what happens if I compare 
uh, 0 with itself. Well, 0 should be equal to 0. So compare zz should be ek. On the other hand, if I uh, compare uh, 0 with anything, well, if this uh, anything didn't land in the first case, we know it's non-zero. And uh, therefore, we'll actually be in the case where we'll, we'll want to return uh, less than, because 0 is less than any uh, non-zero natural number. And uh, the other uh, direction follows similarly. So uh, if you have anything that isn't 0, so we aren't in this first case, so anything uh, here will be at least 1 and we compare it to 0, then we'll be uh, strictly uh, greater than. So I return gt. And now I need to finally uh, give you like the inductive step. So what happens if we compare uh, the successor of a number uh, with the successor of another number? Well, then, as in the video on natural numbers, what we do is we just uh, well remove both of the sort of successors of each of the numbers and just compare uh, the underlying numbers. And that uh, should be the same uh, value. OK, so this is a complete definition of the compare function. And since a minimal complete uh, definition of, well, this type class or just requires either compare or this less than or equals operator, we've actually completely defined uh, our type class or now. All right, so let's. Uh, demonstrate this. So I'll reload my script. And now I can compare uh, natural numbers using the usual uh, ordering operators. And so you see I've only written one function compare. But in fact, I can now have access to uh, all the usual uh, functions that are implemented on type class ord. So for instance, I can now compare, let's say, s of z with this strict uh, inequality symbol less than with let's say z, and it'll return false. And you see I haven't actually written a definition for this, but the definition for this is derived from this compare function here. Similarly, I can use the other operators. So I can use like uh, greater or equals uh, and, and that sort of thing. Moreover, certain functions which just use ordering to work also now will work on the natural numbers. For instance, um, I can now use the min function on two natural numbers. So this is like the built-in min function of, of Haskell. So I could now compare, for instance, s of z and z, get the minimum of this, and then that's just z. So as you can see, we gain access to a bunch of functions by just writing this one function here and implementing the ord type class for nat. Okay, so we now, in order to extend uh, functionality even further, are going to write more type classes. So the next one we're going to uh, write is uh, enum. So I write instance enum nat where. And we remember that enum is the type class for data types which can be enumerated, and the natural numbers are certainly one of those. So to find out which functions I need to write, I have to again go to enum and uh, go to the documentation. OK, so here we see uh, class enum a where. So in this case, uh, this is like the more usual uh, definition of a class where we don't have a constraint. So enum doesn't require you to be of any other uh, type class necessarily. And we see that the, the minimal complete definition requires us to implement two functions. The first one is called to enum, and the second one is called from enum. And again, we can go to the methods to uh, see what the type signatures are for these functions and what they're supposed to do. So to enum should take an integer and return an object of our type, while from enum should take uh, some object of our type and convert it to an int. OK, so with that information, let's uh, write these functions. So uh, to enum, uh, again, should take an int and convert it to an object of our type. And we've basically written this conversion function uh, for the natural numbers in the previous video. So I can say first, well, two enum of uh, zero should just be the natural number z. And then uh, two enum of some uh, integer, let's say i. Well, there there are several cases. So either i is negative. So if i is uh, strictly less than zero, so we know it's not zero because we're not in the first case. Um, then we just want to return uh, z. 
So this is sort of a, a decision here. What do we do with uh, negative integers? So in our case, we're just going to somehow floor everything to 0. So um, any negative integer will be just mapped to 0. I think this makes the most sense. Also, it'll um, give you the sort of correct definition for uh, predecessors, as we'll see. And well, otherwise, um, we know that our number uh, we're given is non-negative. In fact, it'll be strictly uh, positive because it's not 0 here. So we can now uh, basically convert i minus 1 to a natural number. And in order to get the natural number corresponding to i, I need to take the successor of that. So it's going to be the successor of 2 enum of uh, the number uh, i minus 1, like so. OK, so that uh, defines our function 2 enum, which converts an int to a natural number. And then we also need a function from enum, which does the opposite. So from enum of z should be 0. And then uh, from enum of some successor, so s of n, uh, should just be, well, we add 1 to what we get if we convert n to a int. So we just want to do uh, from enum uh, of n. And then we add 1 to the result, like so. Now, because we've implemented both these functions, uh, this is now a complete definition for uh, the class enum for our uh, data type of natural numbers. And we can now, uh, again, use all of the functions that uh, use enum as a type constraint. So let's uh, reload here, and I'll show you some examples. So one function that enum has is the successor function. So it's called uh, suck, like this, for successor. And I can now uh, calculate successors of my natural numbers. For instance, the successor of z is s of z. And the successor of, let's say, s of z is s of s of z, and so on. So this is a derived function, and it's derived purely from these two uh, functions I've written here. And we can see some more uh, methods by going uh, to uh, the documentation page for enum. You see that there's a bunch of uh, other functions. For example, there's the predecessor function. So uh, predecessors, uh, if I take predecessors of, let's say, um, s of z, that's z. And now the question is, what is the predecessor of z? Well, in this case, it, it returns z. And, and that makes sense. But by the way, I've uh, defined, well, conversion of ints to, to natural numbers. So I've said that any negative number will just be mapped to z. And so the predecessor of 0, like the int 0, is minus 1. And well, the natural number corresponding to minus 1 is just z. And I think here this makes uh, the most sense in order to deal with like uh, negative numbers. So it makes sense to just say that the predecessor of 0 is just, again, 0. Now, if you wanted to, uh, if you see these methods here, you can actually write implementations for any of these in uh, the definition of the type class. For example, if you don't want like the successor function to be derived from this to enum and from enum, you can just write your own version of successor in the type class definition. So let's maybe do that, because in our case, uh, successor and predecessor functions are particularly easy. So the successor of some uh, natural number n, well, that should just be s of n, right? And now uh, we can make this code even more compact by noticing that the same argument occurs here on the right and on the left. And this means that we can uh, remove it. So I can just say that, well, successor, so the successor function is literally just this uh, s constructor. And uh, then we can also implement predecessors. So here I would say predecessor of 0 is just 0. So that's uh, the convention we've, we've chosen. And then the predecessor of the successor of n should just be n itself, like so. So this defines now explicit uh, implementations for the successor and the predecessor functions that now no longer are derived from this from enum and to enum. And probably they're going to be more efficient because uh, somehow from enum and to enum, well, if you derive successor from this, it probably involves converting between ints and your, your data type twice. Whereas here, we've just said what successors do directly on our data type. OK. Uh, the last neat feature that we uh, have 
uh, with, with this type class enum now for our natural numbers is that we can now also use this range notation we saw previously for our natural numbers. For instance, if I want to enumerate all natural numbers between, let's say, z and s of s of s of z or something like that. So right, uh, remember that you can write these ranges uh, for like ints or other, other sorts of things which are enumerated. Well, then I get uh, the enumeration of all of those numbers that lie between them. So I have now z, s of z, s of s of z, and so on. Hence, as you can see, just writing well, two functions in the minimal case, or maybe some more if you wanted to uh, make things a bit more efficient, uh, you get uh, access to um, all of these uh, standard Haskell features for uh, the enum type class, and now also any function that just requires type class enum, so it has that as its only uh, type class constraint, will now also work for the natural numbers. Okay, we now move on to the next type class, which we'll write, which is num. So this is instance num nat where, and now I go uh, again to the documentation of num to check uh, what uh, sort of functions I need to write here. So we see that uh, class num a where is a basic numeric class, and uh, basically it just uh, here you can see what the minimal complete definition involves. So it involves uh, writing a function called plus, a function called times a function abs, which takes the absolute value of a, a number, a function is called signum, which uh, calculates the sign of a number. And then we need to write a function called from integer, which uh, converts something uh, of type integer into our number. And finally, we can choose uh, whether we implement a negation or a subtraction. Okay. So as you can see, uh, we have quite a few functions which we need to implement. And also, uh, it's expected that the usual laws of arithmetic hold for these functions. So we want, for instance, our addition to be associative and commutative and so on. So let's start out by uh, defining what addition does. So I'm uh, putting this addition operator in brackets because it's uh, defined to be infix and I'm now using a prefix. So if I want to add n to m, what do I do? Well, I can express this using a fold, as we saw in the video on natural numbers. So I can just say that I'm folding the successor operation over the natural number n. So that's the first argument, and I'm doing so m times. So adding m to n is just applying the successor m times to the number n. And now because both arguments here, n and m, occur on both sides in the same order, I can just get rid of them, and uh, this will give me a much more compact version of this uh, function. Next, uh, we'll write a function for multiplication. This can again be expressed using uh, the, fold, the folding operation. So in order to multiply um, n by m, I'm going to fold an operation, namely addition, of uh, n, and I'm going to start at 0, and I'm going to do this m times. So multiplying n m times is just like adding n m times to the number 0. Now again, I have m occurring here twice, so I can uh, get rid of it. Okay, and the final uh, arithmetic operation I need to implement is subtraction. Or alternatively, I could also uh, implement a negation operation if I wanted to. Um, but subtraction here is easier to define because it's just uh, folding n uh, with the predecessor function we uh, implemented earlier. So similar to how addition is just uh, iterating the successor function as many times as the number is big, uh, subtraction is just iterating predecessors. And the way we define predecessors, things are bounded at 0. So this subtraction here will actually be a sort of bounded uh, subtraction. So we never get any negative numbers. If the, the number you're subtracting is larger than the number you're subtracting it from, then you just uh, land at 0. OK, so this concludes uh, the arithmetic operations we need to implement. And then we need to further implement this absolute value function. So because all of the natural numbers are non-negative, the absolute value of any natural number should just be itself. So we can just write abs is equal to id. 
So it is the identity function in Haskell. And then we need to uh, uh, calculate the sign of a natural number. So the sign of uh, 0 should just be uh, 0. Well, uh, the sign of some uh, other natural number, so any other natural number n, should just be 1. And we express 1 in an, as a natural number, as uh, s of z. And uh, yeah, intuitively, the sign so of, uh, like of an integer, if the integer is negative, it should be minus 1. If it's uh, 0, it should be 0. And if it's positive, it should be plus 1. And so here we've just uh, done this for our natural numbers, uh, where we only have uh, sort of 0 natural numbers and positive natural numbers. The final thing we need to uh, write is a function called from integer, which converts integers to natural numbers. And well, here we've basically already written this function uh, for uh, converting ints to nats. So uh, right, ints and integers are different in Haskell. So ints are uh, somehow bounded and integers are unbounded. So here I can just somehow copy and paste this definition I had uh, for two enum and modify it uh, to uh, be called uh, from integer. Okay, so uh, from uh, integer of 0 should be z, and then uh, from uh, integer of i, well, should we need to do a case distinction. If i is negative, we return z, and otherwise we return uh, what we get if we apply the successor to uh, from uh, integer of i minus 1. Okay, so it's exactly the same function definition as we had for uh, the two enum function, except that now it accepts integers rather than uh, ints. And you can see this in the suggested uh, type signature here. OK, so with that, we've now uh, completely defined um, a type class uh, num for our natural numbers. And well, num has quite a few useful functions which uh, we can now use. So first off, uh, one neat thing is that we can now just use the usual like uh, operators for arithmetic for our natural numbers. So for instance, I can add s of z to z and get s of z, and I can just use the plus operator for this. So remember that in the previous video on natural numbers, we had this function which implemented addition, but we couldn't just use the, the plus symbol in order to use it. We had to give it a new name. Uh, we called it plus or something like that. But now, uh, if I implement actually this type class, I can just use the usual uh, addition operator. And similarly, I can do the, uh, use the usual uh, multiplication operator. Moreover, any function that works with type class num will now also work with the natural numbers. For instance, there's this product function which takes a list of uh, your type and multiplies all of the uh, elements together. And in fact, we can now uh, combine this with ranges so I can say, OK, What's the uh, product of all the natural numbers between 1? So that's s of z. And let's say uh, s of s of s of z. OK, so between 1 and 3. And then I get uh, the result here, which is 6. In fact, because um, we have this uh, num type class implemented, um, like recall that if I just type something like 5 into the console here, this will be uh, interpreted as a general generic object of type num. So if I check the type of 5, you see that it's just a num a a. So it's like just uh, hasn't decided yet exactly what type it is. It's just a generic uh, object 5 of type num a. As a consequence, I can now actually, well, force like 5 to be of type nat um, by declaring its explicit type. So because 5 is a generic object of type class num and nat is an element of this type class, I can now, well, coerce 5 into being of type nat. And so this gives a very convenient way of expressing these uh, long natural numbers just using the usual like integer notation. So now if I wanted to calculate a longer product, let's say I wanted to uh, calculate the product from like let's say 1 to 5 or something like that, uh, then I could express it like this. And you see that the expression I get is quite long. And well, if I choose quite large numbers here, like 1 to 20, you see it just keeps on going because it needs to print 
like a very large number of these S's and it can't do so very quickly. Okay, so I'm going to kill this by pressing Control C. I mean, if you wanted to uh, see how many S's it would have to print, let's do the product of the numbers from 1 to 20, and you see it's a very large number. So uh, yeah, it's not going to finish printing those in any reasonable time. Okay, so with these uh, definitions, we actually now have covered quite a lot of ground. So we've implemented ORD, enum, and uh, num. I'm now going to show you uh, two more type classes just uh, quickly. Uh, but these are ones we haven't really encountered uh, so much yet, so maybe this will be a bit more mysterious. So the first one is called uh, real. And well, reals, we can go to the documentation to see what, what they should be. So we see here that uh, reals just implement real numbers, and in order to be of type class real, you have to first be of type class num and of type class ord. And you see that the only method that real numbers have is this uh, to rational. And well, you need to be able to convert your number into like a rational number in order to be of type class real. Now, because we haven't seen rationals yet, um, well, this might not be entirely clear, but uh, rational numbers essentially can be expressed as like uh, quotients of, of numbers. So here, uh, to rational of our number n will just be what we get if we convert um, our number n to an integer, so to integer n. And then we take that uh, over 1. And now to integer here is underlined in red because I haven't actually defined this function yet. That will happen in the next uh, type class. So we're also going to implement a type class called integral, okay, uh, nat where. And uh, integral implements like whole numbers. And one of the components of a definition of a type class integral is this function to integer. So this is, again, very similar to the uh, enum function we had, the uh, from enum function, which converted an object of our type to, to, uh, to an int. Now here we just need to uh, convert it to an integer. So we can see what this function should do by going to the documentation. So you can see here, in order to uh, implement an object of type class integral, you need uh, these two functions, one's called quotrem and the other is called to integer. So to integer here should convert uh, your, your uh, data type to an integer, basically. Uh, quotrem is more complicated. It should uh, uh, implement like division with a remainder for your, for your data type. So uh, let's first write this to integer function. So uh, one way to do this compactly is just to say, well, we are going to fold n uh, plus 1 to 0, and uh, that's, that's it. So basically, uh, we just take our number. So in, in our case, we will be a natural number n. To convert it to an integer, we just fold n, uh, we will plus 1. So we apply this operation plus 1 n times to the starting value 0, and that gives our result. And well, now, because this n argument occurs on both sides, we can just get rid of it and get a more compact definition of this to integer. Now, because to integer is defined down here, I can also use it up here in the definition of this other type class real. Now, in Haskell, it never matters in what order you define functions, so everything is declarative. So uh, it's okay to uh, use a function that you define later, uh, earlier in your script. The only case where this can somehow uh, be bad is if you have like a, a cycle in the definitions. So if you're like defining one function in terms of another, which is defined. Uh, in terms of the function you're trying to be defining, or something like that. Okay, so the final uh, thing we need to write in order to uh, complete our definition of this integral type class here is this function quotrem, which should divide m by some divisor d. And okay, so the, uh, the thing it needs to return is a pair, where the first argument is how many times d fits into n. And then we also return the remainder of that division. So in the case where d is strictly greater than n here, this means that we can't fit d any times into n. So the, the quotient will be z uh, or 0. And the remainder will just be this number n. On the other hand, uh, in, in the other case where, uh, well, d is less than or equal to n, we can actually fit d into n at least once. 
So uh, otherwise, uh, we define this to be uh, the following. So we define it to be the successor of Q and a remainder R, uh, where, uh, well, this pair QR uh, comes from the following operation. So QR stems from uh, recursively applying quadrem uh, to the number n minus d and the divisor d. So the idea here is that if d is less than or equal to n, so that's this otherwise case, then we can just subtract d from our number n we're trying to divide and see what the resulting division gives there. So it'll give some quotient q and some remainder r, and well, then the, the quotient and remainder from the original definition will just be q plus 1 because we can fit d into n minus d one more times, but it will have the same remainder r. Okay, so I know I'm not uh, explaining this in a whole lot of detail. I've just uh, included these last two type classes here sort of for completeness so that our module is as complete as possible. Uh, if you want, you can think about exactly how this quote rem function works. I think that's the only uh, difficult part. Uh, the other difficult part that we haven't seen is this is this weird percentage symbol um, that basically uh, converts like uh, integer uh, numbers into rational numbers. This is just a thing we haven't seen yet, uh, namely uh, how you uh, construct rational numbers. This is just an operator for doing so. All right, with that, I'm done with what I wanted to present in this video. So this module here gives you a complete uh, implementation of the natural numbers that integrates with the usual uh, Haskell type class system. As a result, we now gain access to hundreds of functions which we can use with the natural numbers. Uh, for instance, I've shown you that we can uh, calculate products of lists of natural numbers and, and that sort of thing. I hope this uh, demonstrates to you how powerful these type classes can be. So whenever you define new data types, it's probably a good idea to implement uh, type classes that make sense for it, because that will save you the work of writing functions which do what the standard functions do, because you can just then use the standard functions instead. In the next video, we'll be using this definition here of the natural numbers in order to implement uh, integers.